Dear students, with this module, I'm going to begin a series of modules on protein structure classification. So this will be the first module in this series. And in these modules, we're going to talk about how to classify the protein structures. As you would know, that the proteins have primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structures that are organized in a very sophisticated way and they help bring out the function from a simple set of amino acids. Also, that each level of this protein structural organization imparts specific characteristics and functionality onto the overall resultant protein. Let me review the four different types of the structures that are there for every protein. Firstly, we have the primary structure. Then we have the secondary structure. It is followed by the formation of tertiary and then the quaternary structure. Here in this figure, I'm going to show you the four different types of structure with the help of an illustration. So the primary structure, as you already know, is simply the set of amino acids that have been polymerized in the form of a chain. So once this chain is formed, then the chain folds and takes the shape of secondary structures. So the secondary structures include alpha helices, beta sheets and so on. So once you have the alpha helices or beta sheets coming about, then these secondary structures combine together to create more complex tertiary structures. So tertiary structures are essentially the complete structures for every protein. However, several proteins may interact together and then they may form quaternary structures. So as you can see here, several tertiary structures have come together in order to form the tertiary structure. Okay, so the important thing to note from all of this is that why are we focusing on the structures so much? The underlying reason is that the structures of these proteins, they tend to be more conserved over time as compared to their sequences. So if the structures are more conserved, then the function of the protein will essentially be conserved as well. If you turn this example the other way, then it will be more proper to say that the function of a protein is conserved and therefore the structure of the protein needs to be conserved, while the amino acids that are underlying the protein structure may mutate, yet their structural formation or the conformation must be conserved. Also, if you are looking at the functions of different proteins, then it may be very useful to look at the structures as well, because structure is representing the function, and structure does not get evolved very rapidly, while the sequence evolves much more rapidly. Therefore, if you are to do a conservation analysis, then you may actually want to look at the structures of different proteins instead of looking at the sequences. Now, if you want to do such a study, you will be surprised that there is no systematized uh, structure to actually represent the various forms of proteins that exist. And therefore, evolutionary studies that are based on the analysis of protein structures are very difficult to perform. Therefore, we need to classify the proteins by their functions and therefore by their structure in order to have a better functional or evolutionary study. Here I will show you two important concepts. The first one is the motif. The motif is essentially a non-functional, so this is very important, non-functional combination of secondary structures in a protein. 
So if several secondary structures, they come together in a protein, but are unable to perform something specific or a function, then they are called as motifs. Here you can see in the diagram, you have a beta sheet followed by an alpha helix and repeated again in the red as well, in the green and blue as well. If you want to look at the structure, then this is how the structure looks like. So the blue portion here is represented by the motif shown here. And similarly, for the yellow part, the motif is shown here. It is important to note that once all of these motifs, they come together, then they actually form something called a domain. So domain in a protein is functionally complete. And therefore, domain can be an ideal target if you are to study conservation of different functions or structures in proteins. So to conclude, domains are semi-independent functional units within a protein structure. There are about 40 to 50 amino acids or even bigger sometimes. And that they have a stable structure because they have to perform a specific function independently. So their structure needs to be stable as well. And also a protein may contain multiple domains in its entire conformation.